Okay, the BFG by Roald Dahl. Okay, captured by a giant. Make, make sure you all are paying attention, okay? The BFG is no ordinary bone-crunching giant. He is far too nice and jubbly. Jumbly. It's lucky for Sophie that he is. Had she been carried off in the middle of the night by the blood bottler or any of the other giants rather than the BFG, she would have soon become breakfast. When Sophie hears that the giants are flush bunking off to England to swallow a few nice little chittlers, she decides she must stop them once and for all. And the BFG is going to help her. You guys excited? <laughs> okay. So let's have you all go to the witching hour. Page nine. Okay. Sophie couldn't sleep. A brilliant moonbeam was slanting through a gap in the curtains. It was shining right onto her pillow. The other children in the dormitory had been asleep for hours. Sophie closed her eyes and lay quite still. She tried very hard to doze off. It was no good. The moonbeam was like a silver blade slicing through the room onto her, Anthony, face. The house was absolutely silent. No voices came up from the downstairs, or from downstairs. There were no footsteps on the floor above either. The window behind the curtain was wide open, but nobody was walking on the pavement. Gonzalo? Outside. No cars went by on the street. Not the tiniest sound could be heard anywhere. Sophie had never known such a silence. Perhaps, she told herself, this was what they called the witching hour. The witching hour, someone had once whispered to her, was a special moment in the middle of the night when every child and every grown-up was in a deep, deep sleep. And all the dark things came out from hiding and had the world to themselves. The moonbeam was brighter than ever on Sophie's pillow. She decided to get out of bed and close the gap in the, Alex? Curtain. Curtains. You got punished if you were caught out of bed after lights out. Even if you said you had to go to the lavatory, that was not, expect that was not accepted as an excuse. And they punished you just the same. But there was no one about now. Sophie was sure of that. She reached out for her glasses that lay on the chair beside her bed. They had steel rims and very thick lenses, and she could hardly see a thing without Sinai yeah. them. She put them on, then she slipped out of bed and tiptoed over to the window. When she reached the curtains, Sophie hesitated. She longed to duck underneath them and lean out of the window to see what the world looked like now that the witching hour was at hand. She listened again. Everywhere, it was deathly still. The longing to look out became so strong, she couldn't resist it. Quickly, she ducked under the curtains and leaned out of the... Abriel? Window. Window. In the silvery moonlight, the village street she knew so well seemed completely different. The houses looked bent and crooked, like houses in a fairy tale. Everything was pale and ghostly and milky white. Across the road, she could see Mrs. Rance's shop where you bought buttons and wool and bits of elastic. It didn't look real. There was something dim and misty about it, too. Sophie allowed her eyes to travel further and further down the street. Suddenly, she froze. There was something coming up the street 
on the opposite side. It was something black. Something tall and black. Something very tall and very black and very thin. <laughs>